Hi, Julie Powell here. In this video, I'm just going to have a little bit of a walkthrough on what's available in the new Knit Collection 6. What it looks like, how to access it, and just some of the features so that you can actually have a look at how it works. So I'm just in Lightroom at the moment, um, and I've got this photo open. This is my new pup, Trix. Isn't she cute? So um, you can either go and access the various NIC programs directly from here. So just right click, edit in, you've got NIC, NIC 6 Analog Effects, which is one of my favorites. You've got Color Effects, you've got Define, you've got Perspective, Silver Effects, Viviso, Viviza, I should say. Um, that's all there. Or if you prefer, you can take your image into Photoshop like I have here and you can play with it from here. Now, I do actually have some other older ones in this thing here, so just ignore the um, like version 2 and stuff like that. Um, but you've got Define, which is noise reduction. I must admit, I haven't really played too much with this yet, but if you're looking for some noise reduction and you want to buy Nick, um, then this is a really good option. Um, Define in the past has always been very, very good. Um, Viviza is great for adjusting color and tonality and um, creating various looks and things like that. Um, perspective is great for fixing um, perspective if you need to um, for buildings and things like that and you can really play around with that then you've got color effects analog effects and silver effects and these are the ones that I love in Nick I have been using Nick since its inception I don't even know how long ago now years um, and I've always loved playing with um, the analog effects the color effects and the silver effects so let's have a little look at what is new and what they look like so what I'm going to do is I can either click on any of these or if this isn't appearing you can come up to filter come to knit collection and you can click it from there so let's silver effects it's no longer pro now so it just takes a minute to load so this is what our new um, user interface looks like um, we've got various things that we can play with now I'll just reset it so that you can sort of see where we're at so couple of things to look at so we've got our compare we can do side by side compare we can have backwards and forwards and you can have it top to bottom so let's just pop something in there so you can see the difference so you can have top to bottom you can have it on or off oops um, and you've got your compare slider so you can fit, fill, one to one, two to one, zoom in, things like that. Um, using the hand and the space bar allows you to zoom in and zoom out to whatever is set there as well. So what have we got? So we've got some presets in, um, on the side here. So we've got all of them. So if you click on that, you can go through and you can scroll down and have a look at various different ones. Anything that you really like, you can just give it a star and that will then sit in your favorites folder. So there's high key looks. There's so many beautiful looks um, and presets that are available in Silver Effects. Um, you've got classic, you've got modern, you've got vintage, Vogue, etc. You can come and um, it has, I've got two custom looks that I've made, um, one which is Julie's Vintage um, and another one which is Lemon Sepia, which it has brought over from my previous Nick. So if you've had Nick before and you have upgraded to 6, then it will, if you've saved presets, it will bring them over for you. You can import some and it's got last edits and history and things like that. You can also convert at any time the object that you're working on into a, or the image you're working on into a smart object. So that's really cool. So that means you, before you'd have to work on something, if you took it back, you saved it, took it back into Photoshop, 
um, and decided, oh, hang on, maybe I just need to fix something, you had to scrap it and start again. Now, if you convert to a smart object, it will keep all of your settings and you can just double click on it to open it back in um, Photoshop and it will bring you back into Nick and you can keep going. So let's have a little look at what we have. So um, this is just the loop view that we've got. We've got a histogram so we can actually come through and work on various color tonalities within the image. Um, we've also got all the different channels so we can show all of those. Um, and these are all global adjustments, so your brightness, highlights, midtones, etc. All the things that you're probably already used to, contrast adjustments, structure, etc. That's pretty much standard. What we now have that we can play with is things like the U-point technology. So you've probably been used to the control point, so we're going to click on that. And we're just going to put a control point here and what that does is open up another set of controls all pretty much still the same but we can choose where we want it to go so if i want it to be on a small area or a large area i can set it in here and i can move that around at any time i can change the luminance the chromians diffusion and I can make them more, less, and you can edit them all as you go through. Your brightness, contrast, structure, amplify whites, amplify blacks. Um, so you've got a whole heap of stuff that you can play with here. Um, and this will only affect what's in that control point. So wherever you put that control point, it will only affect that. So if I want to affect the brightness, it's only going to affect inside that circle. So that's really cool. Now, what we also have is the control line. So I can click the little arrow and just turn that control point off. It's still there, but it's just not affecting my image. Or if I want to, I can just delete that. And then we come back in here and we've got a control line. Now what this does, it affects the line of the image that we're working on. We've still got our control points so we can play with those um, but it is only affecting. Now we can change, we can change the line so that's it being affected in there um, and it's only affecting from this point up so if you want to bring that down so it's probably not the world's greatest thing on something like this but if you were wanting to put a linear gradient into a landscape or something like that that's where this is really good. So you can um, muck around and you can do that. You can twist it by grabbing this control point here. So it doesn't have to be up and down. You can have it on an angle. You can move it around. Again, if you don't like it or you want to see it without, you can just turn it on and turn it off. Um, and if you want to, you can just delete it. So there's loads that you can play with um, with the control points. So again, like I said, you can convert this to a smart object. I can then save all this as a preset if I want to. So I'm um, because it was lemon sepia. I'm just going to do it lemon sepia too. So that I can then apply that to any image that I want to. Now if I hit apply it's going to jump back into Photoshop. Okay so um, now it has come back into Photoshop um, and I've got that as a smart filter so if I double click on that it will then open that image back into Silver FX Pro again um, and everything is there there's I was working on so you can come backwards and forwards so that's a really good idea so let's just cancel out of that oh, click 
close without saving because I didn't do anything now I'm actually just going to turn that off drop down to another one and let's have a look at some other ones so color effect effects um, will give you lots of different creative effects and color effects um, and you can play around with so many things in here there's looks and tones you can have um, you can go in you can add brilliance some warmth there's some vintage effects there's lots of different um, presets that you can use as well so if you click into presets you can come in and any of your um, previous presets that you had it looks like it has brought everything back in so that's a really cute one bleach portrait again you can convert to smart objects and again you have got your control points that you can put in you can also control the opacity of the strength of your control points in here so you can either use the presets or you can come in and you can use 55 different filters and when you click on the filter the little drop down arrow it gives you options within that filter so um, there's lots that you can do this color stylizer duplex which is a lot of fun I've used that in the past um, that gives a lovely almost like an autumn effect onto the image so there's lots of fun that you can have playing around with these effects I'm just going to cancel out of that um, and what I want to do is drop back here and I just want to have a quick look at analog effects because this is one of my favorite um, Nick programs to use um, and a lot of people will get a bit mm, what does it actually do but it allows you to apply a whole heap of analog camera effects to your images so there is 96 filters in all and you can mix and match them so if you want to go to different cameras um, there's different presets for different cameras you can actually even pull up your camera kit you've got basic adjustments that you can do so these are just your normal basic adjustments and you've still got your control points and your control lines then you've got lens distortion and you can just close these up so that um, you don't end up with so many things open at once now you can already see where that has given a bit of a distortion um, on the face and you can play with that and you can give it sort of a a, push, a pin, cush, pin cushion effect you can give it a chromatic shift um, you can play with different looks if you decide you don't like something you just click the little X and it's gone from your recipe or your preset um, they used to be called recipes so if I keep referring to that um, then you've got bokeh so and these are you can change these you can change the size of these you can boost highlights you can boost the blur or the bokeh strength um, you can decide on whether you want to apply a tilt shift to it um, or an ellipse so you can have it as a circle or a tilt shift um, you can do different aperture shapes um, so you can really sort of play around with those again if you don't like that one you can um, you can hit reset you can just get rid of it or clicking the little X will turn it off so you can put it on put it off um, you've got various zooms which are fun to play with um, and again you can protect the center you can have a rotated zoom too so there's different zooms that you can have there's motion blur so you can play around with protecting the center of the motion blur um, that zoom and rotate let's get on the right one um, so you can have the blur strength you can add a blur point so if you want it you can change it around so um, that's with your zoom and rotate or your motion blur now there's double exposure 
these are great if you actually grab your image you can move it around and decide where you want it to be if you want to put a second exposure in and I'm just going to find something so this is something new um, you can now add another image um, which is something awesome because you weren't able to really do that before so you can um, muck around with the exposure balance you can play with the um, actual exposure so there's lots you can do with that if you don't like that image obviously just get rid of it and then you can just play with um, the second exposure that you are going to have um, using that same image duplicated um, so there's light leaks lots of different light leaks and you can um, change the strength of them um, you've got soft crisp and dynamic light leaks you just click on it um, you can put your control points in you can um, set them the strength of them to just a little or a lot um, there's dirt and scratches as well so you've got dust and fluff scratches organic eroded so if you really really want to make like an old school um, vintage um, image with you know dust and scratches and light leaks and things like that you can really really do a very very good job in here um, you've got photo plates so these are essentially wet plates you've got streaked corroded um, concrete things like that um, Lynn's vignettes and the other thing that's really good when you know what's being used it puts this little orange tag next to it so that you know you've used that one um, so lens vignette again you can play around with black or white you can change the shape um, and you can change the size of it um, there's different film types um, and it just goes on and on so you can change the film type you can add the fade um, you've got multi lens so you can have different multi lenses um, you can add frames you've got levels and curves and then of course you've got all your custom sets as well so um, there's lots that you can play with in these don't forget you've got your U-point technology as well as the line technology now um, you can convert everything to a smart object so it's easier to jump in and out um, I think that the um, user interface even though it looks a little different it's actually easier to run through if you decide you don't like something you can just get rid of it you can turn stuff on and off so you can see where you're up to if you want to get rid of something you can just turn it off from here as well and then of course you've just got your basic adjustments as well so i hope that's given you a little run through on the different programs i will hopefully try and do some more in-depth ones um, after i've had a little bit of a time to play a bit more with them um, and of course and as soon as you want to save it you just hit apply and it takes it back if you've got any presets that you have made um, just or anything that you want to save as a preset just click on save preset and you will find them over in either last edits or you will find them in custom presets i just don't have anything in here at the moment okay so that's it for nick collection um and thanks for watching bye for now